almost 10 years after their glorious reunion, the Libertines have not only managed to stay together and sober, but they've written what could be their best album to date, the wittily titled All Quiet on the Eastern Esplanade. It's in short a fantastic return to the form for the duo. It combines aspects from all of their previous records, preserving their older chaotic dual vocals, janky guitar licks and syncopated rhythms, but these are now rolled into a more coherent and mature and musically clever package. Maturity and genius songwriting has shone through this album, with an impressive spectrum of styles and instruments present throughout. From the slow blues song Baron's Claw, to the Swan Lake inspired Night of the Hunter, to the chaotic and cynical I Have a Friend, this album feels like the realisation of their lives work up until this point, with the personal journeys from both frontmen influencing every aspect of the album, from instrumentation to lyrics. Talking of, the lyrical genius of the Libertines is hard to understate. They are self-referential, sarcastic, witty, and critical all at the same time. We have some wonderful storytelling with songs like Night of the Hunter, Run Run Run, and Mustangs, telling tales of eccentric characters plucked from the hubbub of London. One soulful, one funny, another a witty character profile. These are in contrast to the scathing lyrics of Merry Old England, a very on-the-nose statement on British nationalism and racism, or the heartfelt sorrow of Shiver. And of course, there are songs that almost feel like confessionals, very personal dives into their own psyche, such as A Man With a Melody or Be Young. They all share a particular charm and witticism that oozes charisma. Like you're around a pub table with Pete Doherty whilst he tells you a half-fictionalized tale of his youth and the eccentric characters that he's met. The production of this album is flawless. The instrumentation is surprisingly diverse, with trumpets, organs, and string sections all complementing the usual dual guitar setup. Each instrument has its own time to shine. Everything is distinct and rich. At times, the sound gets very hectic, with multiple vocal lines going on simultaneously, gang vocals in the background, and five other instruments all blaring out, but somehow, it never gets cluttered or muddy. You can listen through each song on repeat and pick out different aspects each time. The way the vocal lines are passed around and stylistically change, yet they always stay the focus warm and clear, despite Doherty's best efforts to make the recording engineer earn his paycheck, with sheer variety in his vocal performances. Songwriting has always been something that the Libertines excel at with classics like Don't Look Back Into The Sun and Can't Stand Me Now in their repertoire. It should be no surprise that the two veterans know a thing or two about songwriting. The sheer diversity of styles in this album is staggering. From hard, energetic rock classics to slow, soulful, beautiful ballads and everything in between, the album is a masterclass in writing. Despite the differences in style though, all of the songs still feel as if they're part of the same coherent collective and that's important. And that leads me on to talk about the flow of the album. How does it feel as a completed work? The answer is, it flows like water down a mountain stream. Each song feels like it earns its place, bringing the energy up and down just so. From the energy of a song like Oh Shit, to the sad dance of Night of the Hunter, it feels like a tour through a smoky cabaret show in a lowly English blues club. Sometimes singing tales of local folklore, sometimes lamenting the state of the country in politics, sometimes it feels totally autobiographical. But it always feels genuine. The handling of the more hectic, faster songs by Barrett and the slower, more soulful material captained by Doherty, it feels like the perfect balance. It's a complete work at its best when it's allowed to flow as the writers intended. This album is a triumph. A soulful, mature, relevant journey through English culture guided by two shepherds who have had more than their fair share of experience in the grittier side of life. It feels like a natural progression of their catalogue, expanding in every way, with beautiful production and an eclectic set of instruments and styles used to tell what a simultaneously personal and fantastical commentary. This is an album I will be listening to for a long time and I highly recommend you do too. I've decided not to do ratings so formally on this channel. I think that, you know, there's no such thing as five stars, right? That would imply that something's perfect and nothing is perfect. But four stars feels like an insult when something's very good. You just can't win. So um, I'm hoping that you'll be able to take from what I've just spoken about for the last few minutes uh, and use that to decide whether or not you'd like it. But that being said, it is a really good album and I would probably give it like a five if I was forced to. So there you go. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. This is me trying out a new style of content here, a bit shorter format and so on and so forth. So let me know what you thought about it in the comments. What did you like about the Libertines album? Did you hate it? Did you not? Are you glad that Doherty's back off the wagon? On the wagon. Fuck. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.